So, I had an idea. Okay, hear me out. This is my MacBook Air. My 2022 M2 MacBook Air. It's been my computer for the last couple of years. I've used this thing, abused this thing. It's gotten me through this far. This is the 2024, I think it's the 24 iPad Air with M2. Different machine, same chip. Now, don't worry, this isn't one of those videos where I'm like, I'm going to replace my computer with an iPad. That's not what this is. This is just a general idea that came up because of one, I this is gonna be a test of how, what I feel like will show how the same chip performs in different machines. Whereas we have the M2 in both this iPad and the MacBook Air. So this is a test of, we're gonna, I did a similar test like this a couple years ago with my Mac Mini versus my Mac Air, MacBook Air, that both had M2 in it. And so we're gonna do the same thing here where we're gonna test the M, the MacBook Air versus the iPad Air with M2 and see which one they can process one of my edited videos faster. Um, right into the gate, my prediction is that the computer, the Mac, is gonna do it faster, just because a Mac over an iPad, I just, I feel like, basically, they're the same chip, but I wanna see if the performance is any different between the two devices. And the second reason that I decided to do this video now is because, barely shortly, the Mac Air is going away. That is a snippet for a future video, but. So basically how's it gonna work? It's very similar to the last time I did this. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, mainly because I didn't look in, th in that video. I edited the actual video um, on the camera for you guys. We're not gonna do that today. Basically, I've done, I've done the work already because um, we're gonna use the last video that was up on the channel. It was the um, review slash impression slash just general thoughts on the uh, Backbone version two controller. So we're gonna use that video. We're going to benchmark it and see between the two how fast that it's gonna perform that. So let's start with the MacBook. All right, so we have everything all done. This is just open in iMovie. The video is all edited, it's done, we're at the Import and process. Normally, I leave this plugged into my hard drive that's under my desk, but for the test itself, I just want to test the actual machines. So I'm going to import this onto just the regular system memory since I'm not going to need it after we're done with this. So everything's done. We're going to go up here to our top right corner and we're going to hit share, export file. Uh, we're not normally in this uh, description. I would change that to whatever the movie is about, but since this is for test purposes, uh, I'm not going to worry about it today. And then the tags and the format, I don't normally mess with those either. Our resolution, we've bumped up to 4K. Our quality, uh, we've bumped it up to the best slash ProRes quality. And our compression, we're going to change that to better quality. So our movie tight, our movie duration is about 10 minutes and 42 seconds. And it's approximating that our file size is 47.51 gigabytes. So we're gonna go ahead, get that imported. And then I'm just going to put that on my Mac. Or we'll put it in our documents. And we'll hit save. And it is giving me an estimated time of three minutes. So we will check back in three minutes and see how that is doing. 
All right, and the video just finished importing. It was successful. It originally gave us a estimated time of three minutes at 9.07. It's currently 9.10, so it did that in just about three minutes. So MacBook Air for that almost 11 minute video took three minutes. Let's switch out to the iPad and see if there is a difference. So here we are in the iPad version of iMovie, which looks significantly different than the um, Mac version. But here we are to the same edited project. Um, I can, I'll even show you if we go into it. It's still, look, the, the app looks a little different, but I can go up here and it shows all the same settings and all that stuff. The thing I've noticed with the iPad um, app for iMovie is that this one actually adds in the transitions in between shots automatically. You can still go in there and change them or take them out, but in the iPad app, it adds them in automatically. In the Mac version, you have to add them yourself, which that isn't really a big deal, especially if you're going to use them already. It's kind of nice, actually, if it puts them in for you. But to start our test, we're going to go down here. We're going to go to the share button. And then we are going to, we're going to save and share our video so that we can get it ready. And then we're going to share it, save it to our files. Oh, not that way. Save or share video, save to files. It is currently 9.17. So we're gonna start the timer now and see how long this takes to export. So update, the iPad export is about halfway done. We started this at 9.17, it is currently 9.20. So we are at three minutes on the export. So at this point, it's safe to say that my earlier prediction for that the beginning of this video was correct, that the MacBook Air was going to beat out the iPad Air in this test, but we're just gonna let it go and see how long it actually takes to finish the export on this. Update, it is just about, it just finished. And we're saving it into our files. It is now 9.23, so it took almost six minutes for the same video on the iPad to export that took Oh, less than three on the MacBook Air. So I think we have a clear winner here. So even after that being done, um, what I have to say about this, I didn't think the iPad was gonna do it any faster than the Mac would, um, mainly because it's an iPad. Um, I mean, there are some people that use like iPad Pros or even iPad Airs as like their main computing device if you're just doing some web browsing, research, emailing, things like that. Um, if you edit a lot, I obviously would not recommend you use an iPad over a Mac. I mean, most people that seriously edit and do this for a living, they're not even going to use an Air. They're going to get something like the Pro, but that's fine. Whatever suits your needs. This was just, this was just out of curiosity of my own questions, and it was a video that I enjoyed making a couple years ago, so I figured I got some different stuff with the same chips in it, and just figured to see if I would, how they would do. Um, that being said, even though it took significantly longer on the iPad rather than the um, MacBook, Again, I don't really think it's the chip's fault. Um, I really don't have the technical knowledge to tell you what was different and what could have made things different or what could have caused one to work better than the other. That I don't know, but this was fun and I just enjoyed it. So that's all I have to say in this video. I hope you guys are all staying safe out there. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, how you think that I performed this wasn't accurate, let me know. And I'll be the first to tell you, this wasn't scientifically accurate at all. This was just something of a controlled setting that I made up in my own head. I thought I kept it somewhat controlled and had a constant. If you think I didn't, let me know. Um, at the time of this recording, 
it is Saturday the 2nd, so it is Daylight Savings Time. So if you're watching this on Sundays, Sunday morning, and you haven't yet, be sure to set your clock back an hour so you do not show up significantly early to any of your events today. And so I hope you all have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope you're staying safe out there. I'll see you in the next episode. I'm not going to drop it this time. I'm just going to reach for it. <laughs>